Welcome to Jedela Fashion Guide. In today's video, we are going to be making a trendy corset top with back waistline. So we are going to be making use of this fabric and we are going to be using the pattern that we drafted sometime last week. So this is the front piece. It's going to have this kind of back effect. So We'll be cutting the bra up in a three piece form, and then this is for the back piece. There will be no zipper, we'll be using loops. So, this part we have cut it out to use as our modesty panel. It is one and a half inches, right? So, we open it up, it is three inches, but we'll be making it up to five inches wide, and then we'll be reducing the length by. One one inch from both end. One inch this way, one inch this way, or half inch this way, half inch this way. And then we're going to be making use of the sleeves. This puff sleeve that we made a few days ago. So you can watch my video on how to make this puff sleeve. This is what we are going to be using. And then for this clap tutorials, also we'll be making use of this cutting bias. We'll be adding this ready-made bra cups inside our corset, and we'll be making use of Ridgeline bone. So we we'll go to the. I'll go and cut out the pattern and, and then come back to show you what we have before we start sewing. We have finished cutting out our pattern. This is the front. This is for the front piece. The main fabric and the line. And then these are for the cups. This is for the left side. Okay, and this is for the right side, the three piece. So this is for the left side, and the aligning is also here, two pieces each, two pieces each. And then this is for the back, two parts for the fabric for the and two parts for the line, the main fabric and the lining. And this is for the modesty panel. We we'll use the same fabric as the line. And I've cut this out for the strap. It is two inches wide. I'm going to be folding it. I'll fold it like this. Fold it like this. And then I will sew as one long piece so this will be to to pass through the loops then we'll be using this cutting bias to make to create the loops i'm going to be ironing interfacing i'll be ironing this interfacing i'll do that and show you so i've gone ahead to iron interfacing on the main fabric so this is for the front piece and then this is for the cups this is for the left side and this is for the right side so do well to always label your pattern so that you don't have any issue so this is now for the front side this is the lining and then these are the lining for the cups as so. well And then this is for the back, the back piece. I've also ironed interfacing on them. So this is the line. So to avoid confusion while sewing, always leave your pattern on the fabric. And then this is the modesty panel. I've ironed interfacing on one side of it. I'll be using this to turn it. Also gonna add to iron the rope. I'm just ironing like a bias. The next thing will be to, to sew the cups. After sewing the cups, we will decide the style with the bias. Okay, we have one at the middle here. And then. So this is what we have. I've marked out 
where we are going to put we are going to place the cutting bias okay so just decide how yours will be this is how mine is going to be like okay and then you can go ahead and notch press it and notch it press it and notch it so that it will be easy for you to sew you can also do same for the back piece you can decide where you want the cutting bias to be according to your preference so i want one to be here close to the loop and i also want one here at the middle so i've gone ahead to mark that out and also press it so to be easy for me just in case you are wondering why we have one piece each without having joined it is because we have already we cut out the allowance the dart allowance we close up the dart allowance to have one piece okay so we're drafting this we did the same thing also so you can check my video on how to draft this pattern and then we are going to sew we are sewing the cutting bias on it make sure that you sew close to the edge like this so close to the edge so close to the edge so that your bony can go through we are making use of this regenerate bony so that the bony can go through can you see that so if you so close to the edge your bony can go through otherwise you can sew on the bony if you are using a regular bony like this you can decide to place it and then sew on it so it depends on how you want it you can do it anyhow you want it so mine is going to be on top here you can decide to put your bony inside totally depends on what you want so just be creative on what you want so right now i'm going over to the machine i'm going to sew in the cutting bias on all the pieces when i'm true i'll come and show you and then you will see the next step to take so this is what we have after sewing the cutting bias now looking beautiful already so this is what we have for the front and then this is for the back okay so i've not sewn the cutting bias here yet when it is time to fix in the loop that is when i am going to sew it because i want to sew the regular boning on top of the loop so we can secure it in place so after sewing on top of the loop then i cannot go ahead to use the bias the cutting bias to cover the side of it but these other ones i'm not going to be sewing the the regular bone i'm just going to put them through but the next thing i'm going to do now is to sew the cup so i'm going to be sewing it with half inch i'll sew from here to the end here so we we'll sew the the two parts under so you notch it notch along the curvy side and this is the same for the other one so that it can relax very well Okay, and then we we'll go and iron it and press this place open. So this is what it looks like after pressing it down. Okay. So before we so add the other one to it, you're going to put the place the cutting bias here. We are not going to be putting regular and bony here, just a star like this. I'll do the same for this side as well. So I'll do that and show you. So this is what we have. So when you are sewing it, this is how you should fold it when you are sewing. So you can sew the cutting bias on it. You place it like this, then you sew. After sewing to this end, you cut it, you turn it, and then you also sew from this end to this end. 
then you're going to have sweet tea. So, so far, this is what we have for the cup. Before we attach the upper, the number one to it, remember that from our pattern, number one was in two pieces, and then we created one piece like this. So, to avoid gaping, because after sewing, I discovered that this place had a, a it was a, it was too wide. So, to avoid that, on your pattern paper, just take the one inch from the middle here. You take a one inch dart. Okay. So, I'm using this pen to take a one inch dart. So it should not be like this. So it is this one you will use to cut instead of the other one. So that by the time you join to this, there will be no gaping. It will just relax on the cup very well. Okay. So I had to take this off because we want a neat finishing. Since we are already, since we are going to have the cutting bias here and here, we do not want another one here. So I've gone ahead to cut it as one piece. So if you see this, this matches. Okay. So I've gone ahead to cut another one. This is for this. And then this is for this. So I just thought I should explain that so that you don't have any problem when you are making yours. And then I've iron interfacing on it. So I'll go ahead now. And attach it to this and then show you before adding the cutting bias so this is what we have then you press it open you press the seam open see the cup has formed very well so next I'm going to put the cutting bias here and here so this is what we have it's looking beautiful so the next thing is to position the cup before we go to add it to the to the front fabric so just go for the best way to place the cup so this is what I have after pinning it in place this is for the right side and this is for the left side okay so you just trim out the little excess that you have here for this style you can go for a bra cup that is a little bit bigger than your bust so that this is bigger than my bust a little so that it, it can they can cover you very well also trim this use quarter inch to secure it to the fabric so this is what I have after securing it in place so the next thing is to attach them to the main bodies so this is for this side and then this is for this side okay so when you want to do this make sure that the bra cup is positioned in such a way that this place matches up with this place so you can use your that is pretty much so you can use your pins make sure that it is in place just use your pin like this after pinning you turn it to see what you have okay so this is how it should be it should be in between like this okay should be in be in between these two like this so what you are going to do is that you are going to sew it so from this midpoint you just 
gradually go around like this to make it easier for you you can notch all here a little just a little just give a little notch notches don't you have to be careful when you are doing this so that you don't overcoat It's the same. Give it some little little notches. Not up to just not up to quarter. White. Okay. So after you've done that, these are the cup is going to be. So after you've done that, from this midpoint, you stitch to this side. Okay, you stitch to this side. You can use your pin to position it in place so the notches will help it to spread with. So you can use the other stitch as a guide. Okay, you just stitch it to this side. So once you have you've done it like this, then from the middle again, you repeat to this side. I'll draw your spin to show you what it will look like. So, we're going to have something like this. So, we are through sewing like this. Then, you go ahead and repeat the same for this side. Making sure that this matches up with the middle here. You did here. From the middle, you sew to this side. Then when you are through, you also sew from this side to this side as well. Okay, so also notch this side a little. One, it gives some tiny, tiny notches so that it can relax when you are sewing. So after sewing, I'll come back to show you what it looks like. So we have fixed. We have attached our cup. This is what it looks like. So what we are going to do is to reshape this, to reshape here into the armhole. If you, if you look at the inside, we have allowance here. So we really need to reshape here the shape of the the shape of the bra cup. Same for this side. Let's follow the shape. So it has a nice shape now. So we want to work on the on the back for this. We want to fix in our loops and the modesty panel. So we'll be using the cutting bias to create loops. Take it like this. You get your desired measurement and then you fold it in like this and sew with a matching thread. This is what you will have after sewing. Okay, so I'm going to be using this for both sides and the length that I have here. I 
I have 47 um, 3 quarter. So I'll be cutting this into two equal parts. I'll use one for this side and one for this side. Now, we are going to determine how to place our loops. But before we do that, we are going to do some markings because we have to do the positioning of the loop. Now, remember that we are going to be turning this with a lining. We are going to be turning it with a lining. So, I want to go, I'll mark half inch for the lining. This is for the lining, up and down. I'll mark half inch. Okay, that is for the lining. And then the modesty panel is going to be in between. Like this. Okay. So this is our modesty panel. I've added some inches to it so I can cover very well. I've added two and a half inches to it. So we have a total length of 11 to a quarter. So that the back can cover fully. Okay. So the next thing you want to do is to determine how is to determine the interval because the interval has to be equal okay you have to determine the interval so to do that you will measure what you have in between after you have removed your seam allowance measure what you have and then divide it by how many um loops that you intend to have like for mine i want the loop to start half inch after this zipper allowance half inch so this is where I want the loop to start so don't forget that whatever you do to this you must do it to this so my loop is start here and end here then I'll check the distance that I have in between I have 10.5 and then how many space do I want to have in between I will divide 10.5 by the number that I want to have in between, just like I have here. Here is 10.5, and in between I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. I have 8 in between. So 10.5 divided by 8, I'm going to be having 1.1. That is 1 inches, 1 8. 1 inches, 1 8. So what I'm going to do is to mark 1 inches, 1 8. So that I'll have the same um, interval. So I'll just mark it. So you can decide to make yours one one inch. You can decide to make yours half half inch. So it depends on your preference. Depends on what you want. They just make sure that whatever you, you are using, that you are using same or true. I see the last one, 1.1. Okay, so having done that, the next thing is now, is to now determine how I'm going to place the loop. Okay, so when you are creating the loop, Remember that the loop should be facing inside. The loop should be something like this. We are creating it. Okay? Because you are going to cover here. So that after covering, you will not have this side out. That is after covering like this. Then you will not have this. After you have turned it, you will not have it like this. Do you see that? So... Another thing is to count how many loop that you are going to have. I'm going to be having one. Let me see. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I'm going to be having nine loops. That is, I'm going to be sharing this into nine equal parts. So I will determine the wideness or the length. I will determine the length of each loop. So, if you decide to make yours 2 inches, for example, make sure that all of them is 2, 2 inches. If you are using 2 and a half, make sure that all of them is 2 and a half. 
if you are using three inches make sure that all of them is three inches so for mine i want it to be two and a half so i'll just go ahead and mark where i have two and a half because i do not intend to cut the loop there are different ways of making loops or forming loops you can cut you can also form without cutting so i'm not going to cut what i'm going to do is just to mark where i have the 2.5 so that i can have it as a guide when i am just mark it 2.5 So go ahead and continue that. So you mark, this is what we have after marking. So the next thing is to form the loop. Like I said, you are forming towards this way. So I'm going to be forming it like a letter M. As if I'm writing M, small letter M. I'll need pins, so I'll be making use of pins for it. So to start the first one, this way I want it to be. I'll use a pin to secure it down. And then I found the first one using the mark as a guide. To be here, okay. Then I fold it to start the second one. Then I pin this down. Okay, and then using this, I fold this again like this. Okay. I make I do as though I want to form letter M again and I pin it down. Again, like this. This is our mark guide. Then I see if I'm forming M again, then I pin it. I'm pinning it along the same allowance. So let me know what you think about these loops in the comment section below. If you have not yet subscribed to this channel or is your first time you're welcome please do where to click on the subscribe button so that you'll be notified each time I make a new video and also so that you can help the channel grow and then we have come to the last another list so place it on it and also pin. So when you mark it, it makes it easier for you. You won't have to be packing your head if it is okay or if it's not okay. I have a little left so just then I'll repeat same for the other. And I have this. So they have to be in the same position. We are going to be using the regional burning you know, to hold it in place. But before we do that, so that it doesn't keep moving, I'm going to take it to the machine and just sew a straight line here to just tack it in place. I'll do same for this side. So this is what we have after tacking it down. You see, it's going to look like this when we are true. And this is also, this is how it also look like this. You can easily just turn this like this. 
we close it with a liner first before we use the regular line boning to secure it in place to make it firm okay so to cover with a lining i'll place it on it like this and sew it half inch So by the time we flip it, it will not be like this. Then I also go ahead and close up the upper part, leaving just the side. I'll close here and I'll also close here. Then for this one, I'll be adding the modesty panel to it. I'll put place the modesty panel like this. And then pull this on top like this and sew it half inch so that by the time we flip it, it's going to be like this. So this is. And then I also close up this here and here. So I'll quickly I'll leave that to this side for now. So I'll quickly do that. I'll come and show us what we have. So we are finished sewing the back pattern. This is what we have in the modesty panel. Okay. So I've left here because I need to insert bone here. So I've opened here so I can insert bone. So this is the other part of the back. I'm going to trim off this excess and then I'm going to sew the line for the front piece. So this is the cup of the lining. This is what it looks like after sewing it. For the lining to correspond with the male bodies, we also sew in a dart of one inch. One inch that so that it can correspond. So we are going to be sewing the cup here. Remember the darts that we use was in was four inches that so we can notch here. Notch it okay. So this will be for this side, and this will be for this side. So take this midpoint here, this joining here, attach it to this place that's already much secure it. Do same for this side. So I also notch around this curve area, and notch it so that it will be easy to sew. Notch all here as well. So from one end, you can start from here, from the middle, and just take it gradually until you get to this side and then take this like this so you can start sewing from here so from here and then continue to the end you do the same for this other side so finish sewing the lining this is what we have so we need to be Placing it right sides facing each other, right sides facing right sides. Okay. 
trying to make sure that the line relaxes. So, don't use your pin to hold it in place. Once you are satisfied with what you want, you go ahead and sew. The line is excess inside is okay to make it so make the it means that it will sit very well on the cup. I'll do the same for this place. Just a little. Just make it curvy. Okay. Do the same for this. Don't over trim it. You need to. So I'm going to use um, 0.25, which is quarter of an inch, to sew from here like this. From one end here to this end. And then I'll top stitch it. So I'll quickly do that and show you. This is what we have after stitch. So I'm going to top stitch now. I'll top stitch here. When I was saying I did not add it to the bra, so as I'm top stitching now, I will add it to it so that it can relax in very well like this. Remember to notch this curvy part. Notch the curvy part before you top stitch. Just notch it. So you do same all through the curvy part then. So this is what we have. You can go ahead and iron. Iron it. So this is what it looks like after iron. Just make sure that it lay the lining lay very well and then trim off any excesses that you may have. So we are going to be joining the sides now. Just join the side with the same allowance that you've left. So okay, you are going to and it's like a, an insane finishing so, this is how you are going to take it like this you sew on the seam allowance and then you go ahead and sew on the line i'll repeat the same for the other side and i'll show you so we have one long piece we are finished joining the side we will be attaching our bone now so that we can close the top with an instant finishing looking so beautiful
I can't wait to rock this. Wow, this is beautiful. You can even use a tubeless like this. Okay. So let's insert our bone. I'm going to insert the bone. I'm going to be using the plastic boning instead. The casing for the regular boning is not going through, and I don't want to cut the regular boning because it will reduce the it will reduce its capacity to you know to stay. So I'll just make use of this plastic boning, but I'll use the regular boning at this end since I'm going to be sewing on top. I'll place it like this and just sew. So let's make use of the plastic boning. So for it to, we don't want any sharp edge so that it don't poke out of our fabric. So use a masking tape to seal it. Okay, like this, and then insert inside. Don't insert it like this. So we can also on this one. So when you are fixing it don't allow it to remember that you are going to close up this place with same allowance so just make sure that the bony doesn't get to the end so the bony can stop somewhere here okay so just pull it out and then reduce it like this then you push it back in making sure that it gets to this end and then there's enough room to sew here okay so you can also use masking tape to close up the end then pass it through the channel like this so you measure it make sure it doesn't get to the end this one is here right now, so I'm going to cut about half inch away. And of course, trim the side so that it's not sharp. You can leave it like that or use use a masking tape to close to seal it up. I just you push it in. Like this. So I'm going to repeat for all and show you what we have. So I finished inserting all our bone. <laughs> so this is what we have. So we are going to close up these dumb parts now. We leave an opening here. We can turn it. Create an opening on the side of the lining and turn it out from there. So this is what we have after sewing along the way. So I went ahead to notch this curvy part so that it can relax. So I'm going to turn it out from the space we left on the line. So we just do this gently and turn it out from here. Take your time and do it. Make sure that you don't tear. This is what we have. I'll go ahead and iron it. But we are not through yet. We still have one more thing to do. On this uh, center part, you can also add a bony. Okay? If you like, you can add a bony here. But I'm not going to be adding, I'm going to be adding on this part. 
So I'll use this spatula and bone for it. So just to make this look thin, it will be like this. I'll use the cutting bias. I'll place it. I'll first of all measure what I want. Measure it. This is what I want for here. Make sure there are no sharp edge. Okay, it's going to be here like this. I'll pass it through the cutting bias. I'll place it inside before sewing so that I don't have to struggle to put it inside. So I'm going to place it like this. With the regular bone inside and then I'm going to sew it. I will repeat the same for the other side. I'll sew and show you. So, we have sewn the regular boning on top of the loops. So, this is what we have. And this is the other side. So, this opening, we can close it and glue with hot iron. I'll just fold it like this. And place it. I use hot iron to seal it up. So the next thing I is to attach the cuff sleeve. We made this a few days ago. You can watch my video on how to make the puff sleeve. But I've increased the the length on the video. I use eight inches. So I've added to it now. So the length is now twelve inches. The length is twelve inches and the width is 33 inches so if you want to if you want yours to be like this you can cut the length make yours 14 so that you use one inch to create the casing where you are going to pass the elastic through so we created a casing you pass the elastic through the top and the bottom for this side you use the bicep round the bicep round for this and then for this upper side I use the difference between the main, the chest round and the um, round body circumference. Okay. Oh yeah, it needs an off shoulder. The difference between the round body, the round body, mine is 46, and then the chest round, mine was 36. So the difference. 46 and 36 that is 10 so 10 on fold you have 5 so because this is an elastic I have let's see what we have here so I have here 4 or let me say 4 if you stretch the elastic you have the 5 okay then I use 5 inch to sew as the same allowance so you can make yours it's pretty easy just watch the video on how to make pop sleeve you see this fabric there so the smaller side is is the wider side is for the down and then the smaller side is for the up for the top so this is how we're going to attach it this is the armhole area this point here so we we'll take the joining where yeah, you have the joining. Open the same like this. So we are going to attach here to this place. 
you just tack it you can use your needle to do this or your machine just tack it you can use your thread and needle for this and then you bring it close to this place close to the to this ammo area and also tack and also tack it and then you move a little towards this side and tack it as well so that's just for then if you like you can also tack like um, Three inches, three inches, three inches will be here. This point. So you can also tack it there at the three inches. So I've tacked it down. This is what this is how it is looking. So I'll just repeat same for here. This is the armhole. Do it on the armhole. The joining. Here you have the joining. You mash it with this place. With the joining at the side. Use your put tray the needle and just tack it. Do it a couple of times, three or four times, and then you tie the thread. You tie again one more time. Then you cut your thread. Not again. Close to the breast cup, you also tack it like one inch, one inch close. a couple of times I will try it to secure it tie it again one more time not the thread again okay. then close to this side Using my eye gauge to make sure it corresponds with the other side, and then And then the final one from this is this uh, side so go down like three inches just mark it there the sleeve from the armhole here the sleeve also mark three inches so you're going to tack here 
Here you have three inches. Okay. So you tack here to this place. Once you have gotten where it is, you know this. You can open the seam allowance to do the tacking. the thread turn one more time so we have secured the sleeve in place you see it we have secured it so the next thing I need to lace the back while i was sewing this place i used white thread for the original line burning up then this side i used black so that it will just blend this is the modesty panel i'll just show you the knotting so i've already i've already sewed this before i showed it to you I so, just lace it the way you lace your canvas. Sorry, I have chewed today. Just pull it, making sure that making sure that they are kind of equal. Then you take right to left, left to right, right to left. So this is what it looks like after lace. We covered. I'll just put it on the mannequin for you to see what it looks like. So this is our top on the mannequin. So it looks like. So we have come to the end of this video. I hope you find this tutorial helpful and I hope it was not too long for you to watch. I'll see you again in another video. And if you are a returning subscriber, thank you very, very much for subscribing. For those who are yet to subscribe, please, 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 is your G-Joy saying, please, see you again in another video.